These will fall. If I make them fall, then some small disaster. I come with so many books uh, so that I want to teach all of that to you. <laughs> so much uh, greed. But there is only that much time, you know. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Shruti Smruti Purana Namalayam Karunalayam Namame Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Nabhu Mirnato Yan Natejo Navayuhu Nakham, I did not notice the kham. Kham is also there. Kham is akasha. Okay? It's covered. Today morning meditation also I did not include kham. I said that kham includes everything in the class. Okay? I did not bring it in meditation. You can always bring it in as the neck and above, or the throat and above is the kham. Nakhanendriyam va natesham samuhaha. Anaikanti katvat susupte kasiddhaha. Tadeko vashishta shivakke valoham. You see, the very essence of Vedanta is uh, neti neti tyadesha, athata adesho neti neti ti, this is the Vakya from Rahadaranya Kopanishad, adesha upadesha, athanata have some very significant meanings there. So the, the instruction, upadesha is instruction, the instruction is neti, iti means idam. This, na, I am not. Neti neti iti atma sarvantaraha. That is the vakya. And therefore, this, I am not. Why this I am not? Why? Because it is this. You don't need any further why or how for that. Just because it is a this, it cannot be aham. It must be that which stands opposite to the aham. East is not the west. Why? Because it is east and this is the west. There is no why and how for everything. So, uh, therefore, neti, this is the instruction. Iti na idam na aham, atma. And uh, this is how, that is the instruction. That is the uh, all kinds of negation. Neti neti, they call it vipsa, means it said it twice, but it means many times, not just it twice. Many times you have to employ this scissor of negation, uh, many times you have to employ. Why? Because you have all sorts of ideas about yourself. That is the problem. All sorts of ideas. You see, you know yourself. Nobody denies that. You know yourself. I mean, in a given context, I say you cannot know yourself. Go by the context, okay? Don't try to hold my nose. So, um, that is a different thing. You know yourself means you have an assessment of yourself. You have an idea of yourself. And you should know that idea is never the truth. But anyway, you know yourself through the mist of these ideas. I am this, I am that, I am that, I am this, I am this, I am that. Like that, uh, you have multiple ideas about yourself. And so your assessment of yourself is always through the mist of these ideas. Mist is what? It doesn't allow you to see clearly. Niharena, pravrutaha. So the mist covers up. So, therefore, uh, to know yourself as you are. 
that is the critical thing to know yourself as you are not as you wish what they call wishful thinking not as you imagine uh, as you conceive no you should not imagine you should not conceive you should not ideate you should not wish you should not do any of those things you should be very sensitive uh, to the point that you avoid all these things so to know yourself as you are that is important because that is the definition of truth truth is defined as that which is that is the truth what is is the definition of the truth what is is the truth yat tat yat sat tat satyam bhashyakara so what is is the truth you have to you have to be sensitive to what is to not to what you imagine <laughs> suppose you imagine in multiple ways then you miss what is altogether and end up uh, assessing yourself through the mist of all these ideas i give you an example you cannot imagine the taste of pure water you cannot imagine you can only discover you cannot imagine the taste of pure water but you can discover you can discover the taste of pure water by abandoning all flavorings don't add anything to that okay we used to say penta distilled water five times distilled <laughs> so i tasted it one time uh, it has no taste which amounts to saying that it has no taste that is ever known to me that is the chartha that is the meaning of it so atma is like that so you have to abandon all flavors in order to know the taste of pure water similarly you have to abandon all kinds of ideas that you have acquired you have acquired these ideas you have not discovered anything about yourself human mind is the waste basket of the family and the society and so family puts all kinds of junk into the human mind then you go into the society schools colleges etc they put a lot more junk into it then you go to some traditional this thing that thing they put their own kind of imaginations and ideas into that you are stuck i tell you you are badly stuck you means not you the wonderful people who have assembled here <laughs> so gen- that is the way of speaking okay therefore you have to abandon all these ideas that you have about yourself and then uh, what remains is you that pure you so uh, it is like a distillation that you have to do or the churning when you churn all the impurities float through through the mount or when you heat to the melting point heat a metal to the melting point all the impurities come as a, they float on the surface take out and throw out leaving the pure metal gold so one such thing you have to do a physical example it is so you have to do that therefore negation is the essence of vedantic instruction you have to get that into the mind first but uh, if you are conditioned in a particular way you will not like negation people don't like negation they want assertions and uh, they do not understand that all assertions are wrong all you accept anything about yourself it becomes wrong and uh, you negate everything about yourself you are already in the fold of the reality in the in the embrace of the reality that is the secret of this negation so negation not denial denial is uh, different has a different meaning but if you use the word deny in the sense of negation that is fine if you find anywhere uh, suppose uh, i am a french man no i am not a french man i deny in that sense it is okay but sometimes it deny is uh, i have pain in the knee but i deny that uh, I, there is no pain like that that is denial no not like that 
So if you use correctly, that is fine. So you are not the Panchabhutas and so Aham. What is this Aham? Aham, na, na. Aham, you see, you, you should uh, understand this. I hope I will be able to convey properly. So Aham is a word. It is in the mouth of the speaker. And then it uh, brings up an idea in your head. You hear the sound Aham, the word Aham, and it brings up an idea. Bhuta not Aham. The real Aham is neither the word nor the idea that you get in your head. That is not the Aham. Aham is your own uh, intimate sense or you, if you will, the experiential, if you will, the sense of being. You sense that is what you are. You are an awareful being and so you are the being and you sense or be aware of your own being. That is what Aham is. So the Madhusudana Saraswati says, he gives the meaning of Aham. He says, Aham is Aham Pratyaya Alambanam. That is Aham Pratyaya Avalambanam. Avalambanam is Alambanam. So, what is that inside you? What is that inside you? Which gives rise to the idea of Aham. Pratyaya is idea. Corresponding to the sound Aham. What is that? That is Aham. Therefore, uh, when the speaker says Aham, you should not get stuck at the level of idea, at the level of the mind. That is what people do. They are always stuck at the level of the mind. And therefore, the entire Vedanta becomes a mind game. And that's why it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't flourish. It doesn't, flav it doesn't show any flavor. It, uh, it doesn't uh, feel good also. Hmm? Because uh, you are stuck at the level of mind game. The whole world is mind game. But all the knowledge that you acquire in uh, schools, colleges and universities is all a mind game. And you come to Vedanta with the same attitude and you, uh, you make Vedanta into another aspect of the mind game. Therefore, the point is, the point that I am trying to make is, you should uh, go beyond. You have to go. Beyond you have to go. No, we don't want to go beyond. Okay, sit where you are. <laughs> that is not the way. You have to understand. You have to go beyond. Beyond what? Beyond the verbal expression and the idea that it creates. You have to go within. You have to go into the heart. So verbal expression is Nama. The idea that it creates is Rupa. Are you have to go beyond the Nama Rupa, pa. You, you cannot remain at the level of the Nama Rupa with a cell phone clicking this photo, this and that. Kya baat hai? Are you Vedantin, sir? Are you Samsaris? Sometimes I do get frustrated. So you, you, you cover your, yourself around with all kinds of Nama Rupas as if the existing ones are not enough. You invent newer and newer ones and cover yourself with all of that stuff and uh, yet uh, aspire to become an Atma Jnani. Only thing is, one thing, one credit that I should give to you. You never aspire to become an Atma Jnani now and here. That is the credit that I should give you. You have conveniently put it into the future. Kya baat hai bhai? Uh, therefore, uh, so, you see, uh, negation is the essence of uh, understanding. That is the essence of understanding. In fact, uh, one scientist was telling, uh, negation is not only the essence of understanding, it is the essence of living also. Like, if you want to live a sane and healthy life, you should dismiss, negate so many things that are offered to you as food. <laughs> you should do that. You cannot go on eating everything that is offered to you. They offer a dozen things. Don't complain to them. Don't tell them what I told you. Okay? You have to negate and negate and negate while eating, while inhaling. You, uh, why there is some hair in the nose? Because it negates. It, it blocks so many things that are likely to go into your uh, lungs. 
So only pure air should go, nothing else should go. Why do you filter water? Only pure water should go, nothing else should go. This is how you live. You live by negation and you understand by negation. Negation is the summum bonum or the cardinal principle of Vedanta. That's why you have a Nirvana Shakkam and a Deshish Loki. Why only two? Because you, are, you have to be prepared for negation. People want to acquire, they don't want to negate. So people need some preparation. And when you are ready, there comes the Deshish Loki or Nirvana Shatkam. Therefore, I am none of these things. You see, assertion, assertion, you accept something that is bondage. You accept, she is my wife, I am her husband, that is bondage. If you say, I love her, that is freedom for both. Okay, so what is it that you, when you love her, you see, people, they say, I love her, I love her, I love her, they don't mean it. And uh, they don't know also how to love. So they just say, in the movie, uh, so as the story is developing within 15-20 minutes of the movie, young man comes and a young girl comes, they start saying, I love you, I love you. And they love, it is just a, the coward, it is some kind of a show. A real love, only Mahatmas know. So anyway, that is a different topic. Therefore, you, 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 all assertion is bondage. Suppose uh, somebody says, Aham Brahma Jnani, he is a Jnani. You know why? Brahma Jnani nahi hota hai. Brahma Jnana hota hai. Really? So if you say he is Brahma Jnani, he is a Jnani, you are also a Jnani, double a Jnani. And if one proclaims for himself, I am Brahma Jnani, he is the first Jnani. Everybody else will come later. Brahma Jnani nahi hota hai. There is no Brahma Jnani. There is only Brahma Jnana. Therefore, all assertion is bondage. To question and negate is necessary. This is the introduction to the Shishloka. I did not give it in the first class. Now I am filling it up. Therefore, you see, you want self-knowledge, you, you be serious about it. You see, coming to Rishikesh for a variety of reasons, like there is Ganga, and a nice weather also, this time it is nice weather, one more month it is not nice weather anymore, one month earlier it is not nice weather, now it is the right weather, nice weather, and all children's exams are over, you are having some free time, and you have some extra income disposable in your pocket, and there is very good food available there, and nice bhandaras will be there, and Ganga will be there, temple will be there, puja will be there, ye hota hai, wo hota hai, that's why you came for weather, this uh, camp. Or, you came for uh, self-knowledge. Suppose you say, no, no, Swamiji, you are uh, talking like that, we came for self-knowledge. Do you know what is self-knowledge? Self-knowledge is not uh, knowledge of the self. Self aisa hota hai, iska tum, you will understand that. No, self-knowledge is knowledge of the self. Self-knowledge, for your kind information, is the revolt against all that is unreal. And do you have that revolt in you? People don't have it. People are followers. They look around and find the right person to follow, the right system to follow. What is the right about it? A very convenient and comfortable, some such thing it is. And therefore, so you find a right person and a right system and follow. That is what people do. And there is no revolt in it. Revolt means not about quarreling or anything, inner revolt. So, I am not the body, what a revolt it is. Is it not a revolt? Can there be any bigger revolt than that? I am not the body. I am what I am. I am not the body. And also you say, I need not know what I am, because I am always what I am. But one thing is very certain, I am not the body. That is the revolt. Now are you ready for the revolt? 
Mostly people are not ready for the world. They are ready for uh, some smooth going and uh, some goody goody things in the name of Vedanta. And now Vedanta becomes a system uh, that provides us, the very insecure people, a kind of psychological security. That is how Vedanta has become. So you seek a kind of psychological security in Vedanta. As long as you seek security, you remain insecure. No surprise, we are all very insecure people. Therefore, uh, so there must be a revolt in you. And the essence of the revolt is negation. That is the essence of revolt. And without revolt, there can be no freedom. You don't want to revolt. You don't want to question. And you want to follow. Do do basavarna kind of thing. So you want to follow. And uh, therefore, uh, and uh, in following, uh, you need not question. And uh, in following, there is a kind of psychological security. Psychological. Physical kya hota hai. So, therefore you go after that. That is not Vedan self-knowledge. In self-knowledge, you question and then you revolt. I am not the body. Na bhumit na toyam na tejo na vayuh na kham nendriyam. You see, if you are the sansargan, then there will be no Keno Upanishad. It just doesn't exist or it need not exist. So, there is eyesight. If I am the eyesight, if I see, if that is the truth, I see the flower. If that is the truth, then you don't need a Kenopanishad. Because you are the one who sees. So, Chakshu Shish Chakshu Hu Kya Baat Hota Hai. Therefore, you don't need Kenopanishad. The fact is, you do not see. Things are seen. That's why you should not hurry to conclude anything about yourself. You do not see. Things are seen. A flower is seen. The fragrance of the flower is enjoyed by the nose. You do not do anything. The sound is heard. Okay? And uh, when all the mist of false ideas are removed, understanding happens. The sun rises. When the... When the uh, clouds pass pass aside, the sun comes into its own. Therefore, you don't do anything. Therefore, uh, I, just with, uh, you, what you do is uh, you appropriate the function of the sense organ to yourself. That is the mistake you are doing. You should be humble. You should say, seeing happens. You see, I was reading uh, this always I quote. I was reading the problems of philosophy by Bertrand Russell. And there he says, uh, uh, saying that I see the flower is wrong, and it is arrogance also. I see the flower means what? You are the great man or great person who has the wonderful faculty of vision with which you are making the flower into an object of your vision. That is the kind of arrogance that is implied in that statement. The statement is factually incorrect. A better statement would be, he says that, the flower is seen. So when in high school we used to learn active voice and passive voice. And we used to say in the active voice, identify the subject and put a by before it. That is one step in converting active voice to passive voice. By converting you get two marks. So put a by before the subject. Okay, Rama killed Ravana. Hey, who is the subject Rama? So put by there. By Rama. So, that is the first step. So, similarly, then, uh, then suddenly a statement came where there is no buy. Something like Ravana was killed, full stop. Now, we were disturbed. Hey, kya baat hai? There is no subject with buy. What to do with it now? Then the teacher said, I told her, it need not be always with buy Rama. If you want to put, you can put. If you can ignore it also. So, why to ignore? Because when your focus is not on the doership, the doership is not the focus. River flows. There is no doer there. The wind blows. There is no doer. Earth goes around the sun. There is no doer. Inhalation, exhalation happen in you. There is no doer. Why do you want to emphasize on the doership all the time? Why don't you learn to dismiss the doership? 
All this is argued by Bertrand Russell. Look at that. That's why I say knowledge has no boundaries. It is not Indian knowledge system. It is knowledge system. <laughs> you may call it Indian in a given context, but then that becomes a kind of fragmentary. You are already dividing. You say you are Vedantin, Advaita, but you are dividing in every step. You should revolt. So, therefore, uh, um, uh, there must be revolt. Then only uh, there is freedom. So, I see is, uh, is wrong. It is against the factual situation. The flower is seen. That is enough. You need not say by me. Sri Krishna said in Gita, Anaham Vadi, Mukta Sangaha, Anaham Vadi, Dhrit Yutsaha Samanvitaha. Don't say all the time, I, 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 I. Don't say. Hmm? Our Prime Minister has accomplished so many things, but he never says I. Did you notice that? They are doing it. They are working hard. 145 crore people are uh, taking a step forward. The society is flourishing by the will of the society. Like that he talks. He never puts himself in this in the scene. He puts himself, he told his subordinates, his followers also, I mean his ministers and all that. If anybody says anything against the person of Mr. Modi, don't respond. Just leave it alone. And if any policy is questioned by anybody, respond to it very firmly. Thoroughly you respond. But if the person is questioned or attacked or whatever, called names, etc. Just ignore totally. Nobody really responds. So, when the head of a country can do that by negating the doership, why you and I can't do that? Why can't uh, such a revolt be in you and me? So, nakham, nendriyam, I am not the mind. Don't say, don't uh, identify with the mind. Don't say, I think, thought process. Don't say, I see. There is seeing. There is hearing. Hearing happens. Seeing happens. So, cognition happens. You, you see what people do, they convert the cognition into knowledge. Cognition is not knowledge of all. But anyway, you want to call it, you can call it. If you, as long as you know the difference, you can call it. So, I will be saying so many things. My teaching is not linear. Be prepared, okay? <laughs> so, therefore, Nendriyam. I am not the mind. Indriya, mind is also Indriya. Therefore, this uh, samoha, this conglomerate, I am not. Means the body-mind, I am not. Then what are you? That is not the point. The point is, I am not the body-mind. That's all. I am not the body-mind. You see, don't look for conclusions and assertions, because all conclusions are wrong. All assertions are wrong. All. No exception. Till the other day, it was thought that no object in this creation can travel with the speed of light or more than the speed of light. That was, it was asserted. But now they say, there are things which travel uh, with a speed that is higher, than the, that is more than the speed of light. That is what is called quantum entanglement and all that. They got a Nobel Prize for that. Poor Einstein's assertion was, uh, was dismissed. Newton's assertions were dismissed and Einstein was awarded a Nobel Prize. Not for that, for a photoelectric effect. Einstein's assertion was dismissed and somebody else was awarded a Nobel Prize. And the, that Nobel laureate says, they gave me Nobel Prize for not knowing the truth of whatsoever. That is what he said. One should be humble. That humility should be there. The humility is a, okay sir, okay, that, not that kind of humility. What we say, okay sir, okay sir, not that kind of humility. Or just for prostrating a dozen times per day, everywhere and anywhere. Eh, kya baat hai ye? Eh, ye tamasha? You don't need that kind of, that is not comfortable. It has become a habit. Not that kind of humility. The humility to question or every single assertion about yourself. That is where you have to you have to have the sensitivity and the humility. So nendriyam va natesham samuhaha. I'll be saying a few more things. Why I am not this body mind? 
here the question is I am not the body part. In meditation, I tried this. I used to ask, you just arise above the body mind in meditation. So you will be sitting, eyes closed, and I come and I say Om this and that, and sit upright and all that, and now I advise, rise above the body mind. You can do that. I mean, if you are sensitive to what the speaker says, you can do that. Suppose you ask the question, how? Just I am examining a situation, just moving a little side. Suppose you ask the question, how to rise above the body-mind? What does that question mean? That question means, there is a method, and hence there is a system, and hence there is a person who imparts that system, and hence there is a place or an institution which excels in that system, and you have to submit to that. Is it not so? Did you understand the meaning of the word how? My advice to you is stop asking how, because systems won't liberate you. Systems bind you. In fact, systems are created out of insecurity. Therefore, uh, you don't submit to the system in order to become enlightened. And uh, therefore, don't ask how. When I say, you rise above the body-mind, you do it. Do you not you doing also? But uh, some expression I have to say. Now, you tell me, if I ask you to sit upright and rise above the body-mind, can you do it or not? You tell me. You can do it, Appa. You can do it. Believe in yourself. That is what he said. You rise above the body-mind and see what happens. You know what happens? All your problems and uh, compliance, uh, particularly compliance, the Vedanta people have innumerable compliance, I tell you. Uh, endless compliance. Itna compliance hai. Eh? Are, appa, you, are, you rise above the body-mind and see. I was walking with a Mahatma near Jhola, whatever Jhola it is. The place was quite dirty. I said, Oh, Maha, our Prime Minister said, Swachya Bharat is still there, not keeping it clean, etc. I said, Then he told me, Hey, Mahatma Ji, rise above the body mind. I touched his feet. Yes, I got my lesson. You should be ready to learn a lesson from anything and everything. <laughs> So, uh, people are uh, very tough to uh, put some sense into the people's heads. They are very hard nuts, I tell you. And particularly the intellectuals, uh, the, the scholars and uh, people who have studied for Vedanta for decades, they are, they are the toughest nuts. You cannot crack those nuts. Very difficult. Anyway, coming to the point, uh, you can rise above the body-mind. That is all you have to do. Rise above the body-mind. You are not the body-mind. Why? You can ask why, but not how. Why is inquiry? How is uh, seeking a system? So, you don't want to do it yourself, you want a staff to hold on to, like an old man. Nothing wrong in it, but uh, just an example came out. Therefore, you ask why. That is a question, investigation, inquiry. How? Means, uh, you look at the psychology of the mind which asks how. He, from here to, I have to go to Delhi. How? Uh, which, that is the psychology. There must be a bus or a train or something to go there. I want to know myself how. Same thing. Same thing. You look at the psychology. I want a chocolate child. How? Get rupee from your mother. That is what the man says. He comes with chocolates or some, some toffee and uh, he rings a bell. And then the child goes and asks, I want it. Go and get one rupee from your mother. That is the how. Okay? Therefore, uh, you stop asking how. Better you ask why. So, anaikanti katvat. That's why. You look at yourself. And I raise a question to explain that simple, that nice expression. In your childhood, you had the sense of I am. 
Look at I am. Don't say Atma. Atma is what? You are, you are struggling to realize that. Therefore, you begin where you are. So, what is it that you have with you all the time? The sense of I am. That is what you have, right? Or do you deny that also? No, you do have the sense of I am with you always. That is what you have. No, no, Aham Brahmasmi. Are, Appa, Aham Brahmasmi is okay, but are you the Brahma? What do you, do you know what the Brahma is? Shiva, Aham, Shiva, Aham. That is wonderful. Uh, but, uh, do you know what is Shiva? You know what you know I am pointing out. So what you know or what you are very much aware or familiar with is I am. Aham Asmi. Aham Asmi Sadabhami. That is where you start. So I am. Look back into your childhood. Did you have the sense of I am or not? Not as a child in the cradle, but while you were going to the school, you had the sense of I am. I am and my bag, books and all that. Right? I am. You had that sense of I am in the, in the, in the school going days. Then you had the sense of I am in the college days also. You have grown up a lot in multiple ways, not only physically, but in the attitudes and, uh, um, and uh, values, etc. You have changed a lot. Grown or not, at least you have changed a lot. You are not the same school-going kid anymore. You are the uh, college-going young man. But that sense of I am, did it remain the same or did it change? How do you feel about it? It remained the same. Thank God one time you blessed me. You, I need your blessings. Without your blessings, my class won't move one step forward. Really, I, I love it. You blessed me. It did not change. Then you got married. And uh, you see, before marriage and after marriage, it is a very funny experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after marriage uh, you are not the same guy somehow somehow you are not the same guy but still I am remains the same even after marriage look at that then uh, the person becomes a father and uh, distributes sweets all around sweets hey, what is the sweet is okay but just out of out of courtesy, oh, what could be the nice occasion? I got a son. My wife gave birth to a son. Okay, a proud father. So now you have become a father, maybe a proud father even, which you were not earlier. There is a tremendous change in the consciousness, certainly. And uh, it comes with uh, some negativity also in the sense that you feel burdened this and that. But still... What about what happens to I am? It remains the same or different? Same. Uh, God forbid somebody was sick. I am sick. And then he is cured. Now I am cured. The I am before sickness, uh, while the person is sick and after sickness is gone, I am remains the same. That is what I say. Do you agree with what I say? Then uh, middle age, I am is the same. Old age, I am is the same. Did you notice what I am doing? I am not saying Atma is the same. Atma is the same, of course. But if I say Atma is the same, you will listen to it. You are well, you are accustomed to listening anything. Pura training hokar baitha hai. So you will listen, you, you oblige the Swami. The Swami is an old man and so we have to oblige him. Therefore, we are ready to listen to anything. That kind of obli obliging, it neither helps the Swami nor you. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that's a digression. So, coming back to the point, uh, now the middle-aged person, I am, is the same. The old person, I am, is the same. Okay? When you were happy, I am. When you are unhappy, when you were unhappy, God forbid, I am, I am, is the same. Then, uh, so I am not talking of Atma, because uh, Atma has become an entity, a thing which is away from you. That is the Vedanta that people have learned. 
Atma, I don't have Atma yet. I will, ha- I will get Atma in the future. When, when will it come? Uh, ten day, ten years. It did not come. When you, after taking sannyasa, it will come. I <laughs> said. Therefore, this word Atma is a, is misused or abused a lot, and uh, good meaning people only. Uh, but still, I am, I am, I don't want to put it into some kind of a Vedantic speculation. Atma doesn't change. Oh, is it so? Yeah, it doesn't change. Wonderful. Very good. Next what? <laughs> I don't want to put it into that mode or that mold, if you will. So, I want to make it a very practical, if you will. It is not dumbbell kind of practical, okay? Don't catch my nose. So, it is very much factual here and now that I am. I ask you one more question. You are in Delhi. I am. And you are in Rishikesh, I am. Is there a change in I am? So suppose uh, I, person, I drove from Delhi to Rishikesh. So in I am Delhi, oh big, big, uh, big, big streets and big city and the capital city, that I am is somewhat uh, bloated. And by the time I come to I am, uh, Rishikesh, I am becoming religious or whatever. Is there such a thing in it? No. Circumstances change. Even the mind changes. The mind is not same in Hyderabad or Delhi or uh, Rishikesh. It changes. And uh, the, the environment will have an impact upon the mind by all means. But I am is the same. Then I ask you one question. When you wake up in the morning, uh, you feel a bit dull, tamoguna. But then you become active after to sipping a cup of coffee, rajoguna. Then you start reading after pa- a book, after some bath, etc. Sattvaguna. All these are changing. But does the I am change? Afternoon, I am changes. No, the body changes, the mind changes as the sun moves, etc. Apparently, so body changes. Body will have some changes. It becomes. It was in Tamoguna. Now it becomes Rajoguna, etc. And the mind becomes a Sattva, etc. All changes can happen. This is the changeful body. Mind is the changeful. It is the guna karya, the effect of the gunas, which are constantly changing. But the I am remains the same. And what remains the same is called Anaikantika. Sorry. What remains the same is called Aikantika. It never changes. It is the same. I am is the same. And uh, the body changes. Anaikantika Tvat. Why I am not the body? This is the essence. As you sit here, now and here, there is a, there is a, 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 an entity, I don't want to call it a thing, an entity or a category, if you will, in you, which is immobile, which just doesn't change. It is changeless and hence timeless. Change and time go together. So in you, as you sit here and now, now and here, there is an, a category in you, if only you pay attention, you will, re, you will discover in yourself, as yourself, that category which is changeless. And then you look at yourself cautiously, you will find everything else is changeful, the body changes, the mind changes, these organs, eyesight, etc. changes, the glasses change every two years or so. So everything, ear, hearing aid changes, hearing aid changes, as skin changes, as the age comes, everything is changing. People change around. And then uh, things, physical things also change. So people change. The children who were very obedient, obliging and all that uh, while they were at home and uh, uh, they were uh, up to teenage, etc. They are so nice, but afterwards they are not any more nice. They have their own mind, and they don't follow the parents. And the parents are at, at their wit's end, uh, not knowing what to do with these guys. A perennially unhappy parents. So that is how they are. Because the people around change. 
Is he the same son whom I brought up as a kid? Is he the same son? Doesn't look like. <laughs> Is he the samsari? Everything changes. People change. Circumstances changes. Change. Government changes. Everything changes. Weather changes. So global heating etc. is happening. So many things change. So all around. And in the body-mind everything changes. And uh, the sense organs etc. they change. Organs of action they change. But then there is one thing that is changeless. Now I will tell you the law of physics which is as good as law of Vedanta. You see we have some laws of Vedanta which are as precise as any mathematical law or physics law, law of physics. And the law is anything that changes must have a changeless background. That is the law. You see, one physics professor I was talking and he told me there is a thing called velocity. Velocity is a body moving at a certain speed. So there is a thing called velocity only when there is a fixed point. Otherwise there is no velocity. So a rocket is traveling at a particular speed or a train is traveling at a particular speed only with reference to the rails. The rails are the fixed point. With reference to those fixed, that fixed point, the train is running at a speed of 110 kilometers per hour or what. Similarly the rockets. So they release a rocket. And it goes beyond the beyond the gravitational pull of Earth and goes into outer space, and it is still uh, going. Now they have to redefine its velocity. First they define the velocity with reference to Earth as the fixed point, but now a, a point comes where Earth is no more relevant. They have to go to Mars. So far they come across some other planet, Venus maybe. And then the, uh, the plan, this uh, satellite is also their moon, so so it has to cross these things. And they they estimate the velocity. While estimating the velocity, the fixed point uh, could be Earth to begin with, and it could be Venus later. Our Mars uh, one satellite has gone. Maybe with regard with reference to Venus, they calculate. So there must be a fixed point with reference to which. You can calculate the velocity. There must be a fixed point. Okay. You see, Archimedes said, you give me a fulcrum, I will uh, lift the earth and put wherever you want it. <laughs> this is what he said. But all you have to do is put a fulcrum, something like that. A fixed point should be there. Then I asked, suppose there is no fixed point, what happens? Then he said, you will not have anything called motion. The thing called motion vanishes. When motion vanishes, uh, time also vanishes. You reach a state which is immobile, there is no motion and there is no time. And our rishis call that state as Brahma. In a way, I am just telling you. Therefore, just only one point. Anything changes must have a changeless background. The Ganga is flowing river, but there is the river bed which doesn't change. Then only there is a flow of Ganga. Suppose the train is running. This is a question in relativity. Yoganagari train begins. And the train is running towards Haridwar. The rails also are running towards Haridwar. Okay. Then when will uh, the train reach Haridwar? It won't reach, I suppose. In Allies in Wonderland, so they run for one hour. And observe, notice that they are at the same point where they started. <laughs> and afterwards what happened, I don't remember or I don't know. Therefore the point is there must be a changeless. Whenever you see a change, there must be a changeless. I suggest, it is unfortunate, that we are focused on the changeful. And we totally ignore the changeless. That's why the changeful appears real to us. The weather is real for us. The space is not real. Only the weather is real. Weather changes. The background is space. 
you don't pay attention to space. Buddha became a Buddha by paying attention to space. Buddha meditated for one month on space. Because space is the changeless. That is the beauty of space. So everything else changes. Space remains the same. Changeless. So in you, there is the changeless. I am. Take it that way. You need not rush to call it Atma. It is Atma only. Uh, you need, need not rush. Because the moment you say Atma, it becomes a conceptual. And you start accumulating knowledge of Atma, which is not a knowledge at all. All knowledge. Do you care for what I, uh, do you want to hear what I want to say? Don't you mind? Okay, you may note down. All knowledge is in a science. Okay, I said it already. So, the science is ignorance. Therefore, uh, so you are uh, conscious of, you know all about the changeful. Not knowing a wee bit about the changeless. What a misfortune. So you have to examine this issue. Oh, this much is changing. There must be a changeless background. It must be. So, let me, let me explore the changeless background. You have arrived at home. Yourself is the changeless background. You are Aikantika. And everything else is anaikantika. So, the body-mind is ever-changing. And therefore, I am the changeless. Therefore, I am the real. The body-mind is unreal. Whatever changes is unreal. The changeless and hence timeless is real. Yet satyam tan nityam. Put it the other way. Yet nityam tat satyam. The timeless the changeless, which both are one and the same, the changeless and hence the timeless is alone, is real. And that real is in you. You have to discover it. How to discover? Just by being sensitive. You are consumed by what is changing. The body, the ignore body, ignore body, it will never be fully comfortable. It will never be fully healthy. There is nothing like a 100% healthy body. Ignore it. Learn to ignore it. So, give a pay proper attention, to, uh, required attention to it and then leave it alone. Don't have what is called Dehabhimana. So, so people have Dehabhimana. Deha is the changeful. You have to correct your attitude to your body and leave it alone. Don't pamper. Don't torture. So, you come to uh, you come to some of these religious places, you see both. So in places, they pamper the body. So, uh, all kinds of sweet uh, sweets they eat in the name of God. They know which sweets God likes. And so prepare those sweets liked by God in uh, large quantities and go on consuming them. Prasadam bolte. Prasada is not what you eat. Somebody must have told you that. At least let me tell you that. Let me be the Papala Bhairava who says all these things. Prasada is not what you eat. Prasade sarva dukkhanam hani rasyo pajayate. So eat a laddu prasada, now sarva dukkhanam hani rasyo pajayate. Kya baat hai bhai? You are supposed to be a student of Gita and Upanishads. So, not a Skanda Purana. So, therefore, <laughs> Therefore, anaikanti kattva, you have to be sensitive and uh, uh, you have to discover by, uh, discover the changeless in you. How do you discover the changeless in you? By looking around, you will discover the changeless in you. By go to the library and discover the changeless uh, in the books. They have their place. We are not dismissing anything. They have their relevance. But you have to discover the changes in you, in yourself, by yourself, as yourself. And while discovering the changes in you, your spouse will not be by your side. You want to discover the changes along with your spouse? You want to do meditation, the entire family together? 
फैमिली कैंप ऑल फैमिली एंटायर फैमिली विल डू मेडिटेशन ये क्या बात है भाई ये क्या चल रहा है देर फॉर यू हैव टू बी सेंसिटिव टू द चेंजलेस इन यू अंडर डिस्कवर द चेंजलेस इन यू एट द सेम टाइम यू विल ऑल्सो सी दैट द बॉडी माइंड इज द चेंजफुल द ब्लेस्ड थिंग डजेंट रिमेन द सेम इट चेंजेस बाई द इयर चेंजेस बाई द मंथ यू मे नॉट बी एबल टू नोटिस चेंजेस बाई द मंथ या इट चेंजेस बाई द मंथ वी शेव एंड ऑल दैट यू नो इट चेंजेस बाई द मंथ and it changes by the day and it changes by the minute and it changes by the second that kind of a changeful thing it is anai kanti katva therefore i am not the body mind therefore just keep the body mind going don't pamper it don't torture it many people pamper it a few people torture it Don't touch it. You keep it. You see, you have to walk around, put a, a pair of chapels, because those stones they have put they are very hard stones. So you don't walk on it without chapels, with some soft chapels. You have to walk. <laughs> so you will uh, you will hurt yourself otherwise. So anyway, I tell people when they want to uh, when they want to pave. the footpath i say for god's sake don't pave it leave it like that because uh, the soil uh, it has some absorption it 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 it, it allows it takes uh, it absorbs the shock a little as you walk but you pave it uh, then you are hurting yourself don't pave the walking path so the other day we were walking in uh, garden in delhi that lodi garden and uh, i was amazed and i was very pleasantly surprised to see that the footpath on which people walk they have rubberized it nehru garden they have rubber uh, not lodi garden uh, rubberized it means they put a, a thin layer of rubber on the surface so that while walking you feel the difference uh, so therefore uh, you keep the body going i suggest most of the time keep the body going you, you don't pamper it you don't uh, torture it or uh, cause it trouble to that keep it going most of the time below the thre- threshold of conscious attention that is how you have to keep the body going conscious attention to the body that should be there only on and off most of the time the body is left below the threshold of conscious attention okay so you have to do that you cannot put so much importance to the body and start celebrating the body in one name or another and uh, so you cannot do that so then what happens you become dull and your mind becomes blunted because of uh, attention to the unreal attention to the jada insentient mind becomes blunted and where is the self knowledge there is no self knowledge nothing the first things first the first thing is deal with the body mind identification therefore get out of it so you most of the time the body should remain below the threshold of conscious attention means you should pay conscious attention to the body only that much and uh, youth do not even pay any attention because the youth is on their side but elderly people they have to pay some conscious attention to the body and uh, pay that and be done with it rest of the time you live beyond the threshold of body identification body uh, identification that is how one should live and you are not the body with that kind of a sensitivity i i repeat the same word so with that kind of a sensitivity openness and a pliability if you will you will discover the changeless in you that i am is the changeless in you you are that i am changeless 
you are not the changeful body. Anayikanti kattvat. Let me put an end to that. Susupte kasiddhaha. What is this ayam? In susupti there is no ayam. Don't bother about dream. In dream there is some kind of ayam, you know. The same ayam may be there in dream. Uh, in the waking state I am the father. In the dream also I continue to be the father. Same ayam could be there. Sometimes the ayam may change also. I mean, the ayam, the the uh, the dress or the shroud in which the ayam is held, that may change. In the sense that, in the waking state I am a human being, in uh, and in the dream state I am an animal. Something like that may happen rarely. Generally, in the waking state one is a beggar, but in the dream state he is the king. That kind of things happen. And in the waking state he is a clerk, but in the dream state he is a poet. Some such thing can happen. Uh, but uh, so don't worry about dream state. There is some ayam there also. Uh, but here is not the context of uh, considering dream state. We are looking at waking state vis a vis the uh, deep sleep, susupti. So, if ayam is the truth, uh, then uh, um, the, in susupti, uh, in deep sleep, there is no ayam. So, what do you do now? So, ayam is not the final. It is not the ultimate. You see, what happens is, uh, between karana and karya, the cause and effect, we use uh, the language interchangeably. Take the karya and call it karana. Take the karana and call it karya. Like that. Generally, you don't do that way, but this way you do. Hold a necklace and say gold. You can do that. You are holding on to the necklace. So I have this much gold. Like that you can say. So in the karya, karana upachara. The upachara of the karana is allowed. So ayam is the atma in the sense that atma reflects in the body mind as ayam in that sense. It is like this. There is ayam in you. There is ayam in the other person. There is ayam in me. In every one of us, there is ayam. Okay? And uh, so, so many multiple ayams kind of thing it is. But every one of these ayams, every one, every single ayam, that, that experience, anubhuti it is, aham anubhuti, not aham pratyaya. Okay? So, the sense of ayam, it has the same origin. It is like you are looking at the ocean, and you are looking at multiple waves, and every wave has the same origin. All the waves have the same origin. And the name of that origin is ocean. And what are the limitations of wave, whatever limitations of the wave are, like wavelength, etc., they apply to the wave only. They differ from wave to wave also, but they don't apply to the ocean. Okay? Therefore, a wave cannot say, only I am there, and other waves are there, but there is no ocean. Can the wave say that? It cannot say. A wise wave should say, I am the wave, there are many other waves, we are all waves, different waves, but we have the same origin, which is the ocean. That is what a wise wave should say. That wave is called Advaita wave. And there is another wave. I am a different wave, all others are different waves. I am a spiritually superior wave. Whereas all other, some of these waves are very lowly and some of them are moderate. But uh, more, every one wave is super, inferior to me. I am the superior wave. And there is a God wave. Our ocean is the God. God is in Vaikuntha. And I connect these lowly waves with that God. I am the Guru. This is another wave. The real understanding is we are all waves. So we are all so many waves. I am saying waves. Some people say bubbles also. We are all so many waves. We have our own uh, bodies, minds, etc. In a way different. Really speaking, they are not even different, but let us say different. Each wave has its own wavelength and all that. So there are differences. Some, are, some waves are breakers, so some are very uniform waves, a simple harmonic motion and all that. Uh, so we are all waves. In a way, in the, as waves we may all be different, that is fine, but we all have the same origin. This is called the vision of non-duality. Are you ready for it? 
Don't tell, uh, yeah, yeah, Advaita is fine because our parents followed Advaita and our uh, grandparents also followed Advaita. We are horizontal people, we are not vertical people, therefore we follow Advaita and our Guru is also Advaita. Aisa nahi bhai. It is not like that. That is just following, blind following. Are you ready to that revolt, inner revolt uh, from duality into non-duality? Are you ready for that revolt? If you are ready, then you are a student of Vedanta. Then we can discuss something. If you are not ready for that, we will meet elsewhere. <laughs> we will see again. Om Purnamada Purnamidam